good morning students today we will be doing unit 1 chapter 5 in english our objective for today is students will be able to watch and understand yani aap dekh paoge aur samajh paoge a narration of the play narration kya hota hai matlab a reading out or aisa matlab reading out karna jaise ki tum usi play ke character ho of the play john of arc and answer questions on the same so we are going to be able to watch and understand a reading or a narration of the play john of arc and answer questions on the same moving on to the next slide now before we move on we'll just read a little bit of information on who is john of arc actually was she a fictional character was she a real woman so actually john of arc was a woman who was born in france she was a peasant girl born in france she was very brave and did not fear anyone as you can see in the picture she is shown holding a sword and she is shown wearing a soldier's uniform so we can tell that she is very brave and did not fear anyone she is also considered to be a heroine of france for her role during the 100 years war this play joan of arc is said to be written during the time where the 100 years war in france was happening so she was considered to be a heroine of that war now why was she considered a heroine we'll, we are going to find out through that play she was killed at 19 years of age during the war when she took part in the war she was 17 years of age but after fighting for on for 2 years eventually she lost in the war against the people who she was fighting against and at 19 years of age she was killed and finally there were many famous paintings plays and writings about her bravery she is such a important character in history that many writers painters artists and people who wrote plays they wrote a lot about her bravery so this is who joan of arc is as a person <clears throat> moving on um, two things for this lecture i have kept the textbook in front of our video so you can choose to keep a textbook in front of you or you can even directly watch the video that's completely okay what i want you to do is watch the video listen to how i'm pronouncing the words and also what i've got on this side of the video is the meanings of certain words that i have highlighted over here so pay attention to them as well all right so let's begin the narration of the play john of arc john of arc george bernard shaw 1856 to 1950 so this is our author of the play george bernard shaw he was born in 1856 he died in 1950 was an irish playwright and critic now playwright and critic kya hota hai playwright is a person who writes plays you can use your uh, self monitoring to understand what's the meaning of a playwright play yani natak likhna and write matlab likhna so playwright is a person who write plays then a critic is a person who judges artistic work now george bernard shaw was not only an author but he was also a critic matlab wo dusro ke kaam dekhta tha dusro ke plays dusro ke poems songs dekhta tha and he used to judge them ki uh, were they good enough were they not good whether they need improvement he could, he was a person who could give feedback he wrote many many he wrote more than 60 plays during his lifetime including major works such as man and superman in 1902 pygmalion in 1912 and saint john in 1923 he was the leading dramatist of his time a dramatist is a person who writes plays again just like a playwright and he was awarded the nobel prize in literature in 1925 george bernard shaw was such a wonderful writer that he was awarded the nobel prize in literature the nobel prize in literature is given to people who write a lot of poems plays or any writing work all right so let's begin with the chapter the war fought between england and france from 1337 to 1453 has come to be known as the 100 years war 1337 to 1453 if you count the duration it is a proper 100 years war fought between england england yani the britishers and france during this time joan was a peasant girl born in eastern france now peasant is a farmer who is poor so joan was a girl who was born in a farmer's family that was very very poor born in eastern france who led the french army to several victories during this war so she was such a brave girl we already learned about it in her introduction that during her fight with the british she led the french french yani the people who are born in france to several victories during this war victories ka matlab hai wins matlab 
many of the fights that she participated in, she won most of them. All right. Now, this play begins at the time when all of northern France and some parts of the southwest were under foreign control. The English controlled some parts, English and the British controlled some parts, and the Burgundians controlled the others. The city of New Orleans, one of the few remaining French cities, yani France ka sabse main cities mein se ek, was held by the English. This year was 1429. Captain Robert de Badricourt, a military officer, is seated at the table. His steward stands facing him. Now, a steward means an attendant or an assistant. Now, what if you see the if you notice the last two lines of the play, it is giving you a setting. Ki kaun se saal mein hai ye play? It's in 1429. And who is the characters that I've introduced? Now there are two characters: Captain Robert E. Badricourt, who is a military officer, and his steward, yani his assistant, who stands facing him. So if you see the language used here, it is very play-like. Ki, we look describe kar rahe ki scene kaisa hona chahiye. How is the scene supposed to be like? All right. Moving on. Now before we move on to the actual play, I'm going to quickly show you the map of France during the Hundred Years' War. All right. Now as you can see, um, this is the map of France. France is shown in blue color. as the description in the textbook says most of the northern part of france was covered by the british you can see england is shown in the pink color pinkish tint so you can see that england has captured many parts of france and some of it were captured by the burgundians so there is another group of people called the burgundians you can see the color purple over here purple or violet so they had captured some other parts of france and the parts in blue were the only parts that were remaining and uh, you can see orleans here that's the important city that uh, we were talking about and in this play itself it's also very important so this was how france was looking like during the time of the play all right moving on now this is the first line so we are going to quickly see what comes out of it all right i'm going to read the lines in the way the character in the play is supposed to read it you can listen to how i'm reading it as well all right so the first character speaking is robert robert who is the military officer i told you to throw the girl out you have 50 armed soldiers and dozens of strong servants to carry out my orders aren't they afraid of her the steward then says no sir we are afraid of you but she puts courage in us she really doesn't seem to be afraid of anything perhaps you could frighten her sir grimly yani seriously perhaps where is she now the steward says down in the courtyard sir robert goes to the window and asks the soldiers to send the girl up the girl enters she is a well built strong country girl of 17 to 18 years old the squire's glare neither frightens her nor stops her she speaks very confidently john now we have a third character here that is joan of arc who is a main character she says good morning captain squire you are to give me a horse and armor and some soldiers and send me to the dauphin now before i move on with the scene in the scene robert the military officer is telling his attend assistant like we have so many soldiers we have dozens of servants when why can't they throw one girl out wo ek ladki ko kyun nahi bahar nikal sakte so the assistant or the steward said that sir we are afraid of you but she helps us become brave and she is putting courage in us so we don't really tell her anything so why don't you talk to her directly perhaps you could frighten her sir matlab shayad aap baat karke dekh lo na ki aap shayad unko dara sakte ho usko jaane ke liye bol sakte ho so he as in robert asks the assistant to send her up so robert goes to the window and asks the soldiers to send the girl up So the girl enters. Who's the girl? Our main character, that is Joan of Arc. And what does Joan say to Robert? She says, "Good morning, Captain Squire. You have to give me a horse and armor. Yani, आपको मुझे घोड़ा देना है. You have to give me some uniform and some soldiers and send me to the dauphin. All right. Now, quickly going through a few meanings. Courtyard का मतलब है an open area without a roof, which is surrounded by walls on all sides. So Joan was waiting in the courtyard, and The second meaning is the squire's glare. 
glare yani stare yani dekhna suppose the uh, let's say someone is misbehaving in class so what do i do i stare at that person until that person finally looks at me and has his or her full attention on me so the squire or robert is glaring at joan of arc but she is not scared she is very confident and she is not frightened at all and finally the dauphin send me to the dauphin dauphin kon is the eldest prince of france yani sabse oldest rajkumar prince yani rajkumar bolte hai to the eldest prince of france she wants to go to the prince now you must be thinking she is just a farmer girl why does she want to go to the prince let's find out robert this girl is mad why didn't you tell me so you blockhead blockhead ka matlab a stupid person a stupid person is a very mean thing to say guys you can just call blockhead as someone who is not thinking well steward so do not anger her give her what she wants i shall send you back to your father with orders to put you under lock and key now robert is telling to john that you better go back to your home and i will send you back to your father and order him to lock you in your home so john says you think you will squire but it won't happen that way you said you would not see me but here i am so she is so confident wo robert yani us military officer ko bolti hai ki tumne to bola to mujhe nahi dekhoge but finally i am still here so you see i am just getting all i want anyway so she is very confident robert so you are assuming that i will give you what you want assuming ka matlab hai thinking without any proof so he robert is also very confident he is also telling john ओ तो तुम्हें लगता है मैं तुम्हें तुम जो भी चाहो मैं वो करके दूंगा तुम्हें सो जोन सेज ये स्क्वायर अ हॉस विल कॉस्ट सिक्सटीन फ्रांस फ्रांस इज द सिस्टम ऑफ करेंसी यानी द सिस्टम ऑफ मनी इन फ्रांस इट इज अ बिग अमाउंट ऑफ मनी बट आई कैन सेव इट ऑन दी आर्मर आई डोंट नीड ब्यूटिफुल आर्मर मेड टू माई मेजर आई कैन फाइंड अ सोल्जर्स आर्मर दैट विल फिट मी वेल इनफ आई शैल नॉट वॉन्ट मेनी सोल्जर्स द डॉफिन विल गिव मी ऑल आई नीड टू फ्री और लेन्स now one more meaning here is made pleasure that is made according to one's size okay so now what has happened in this scene is now john is finally in front of the military officer and she the officer is telling her i'll i will send you home and lock you in your home i'll tell your father the order to lock you in your home but john is still very confident and she says no you will not do anything you will give me a horse and a horse will cost me around 16 francs any 16 uh, french money in of sorts and it's a big amount of money back in then even now what we count as let's say let's compare francs to rupee when we think of 16 rupees we'll think are zyada kuch to hai nahi but back in the day during the 1400s 1500s or the 1800s also as well that much amount of money was very very large but what does john say that she will not she will save that money wo kaise save karegi she will only use that money to buy a horse but she doesn't need a armor armor yani protective clothing jo pehnte hai na uh, jaise soldiers pehnte hai like a vest of sorts so she said she doesn't need a vest she will find any used vest that will fit her well and then she also goes and says that i do not want many soldiers the dauphin will give me all i need matlab jo prince hai france ka when i'm going to meet him i will request him to give me the soldiers and everything else all right so this is the first scene now robert when he hears this he's shocked so you can see in the uh, brackets here it says shocked matlab play writer jo hai wo dikha raha hai ki kya kya expressions ho rahe hai play mein to free orleans so john says yes squire three men will be enough for you to send with me polly and jack have promised to come with me robert says you mean mon monsieur de pulengi monsieur is the correct way to pronounce the french word but even if you you say the word monsieur that is also completely okay indians pronounce french words in a different way so john says yes squire jack will come willingly he is a very kind gentleman and gives me money to give to the poor i think john godsave will come and dick the archer and their servants john of honcourt and julian there will be no trouble for you squire i have arranged it all you only have to give the order robert to the steward so now the military officer is saying to the assistant is this true about monsieur de pulengi steward eagerly matlab excitedly he saying yes sir and about monsieur de metz too they both want to go with her now i've been saying this word monsieur for a very long time but 
you might have known what what's the meaning is here is a french word for mister all right so robert goes to the window and shouts into the courtyard send monsieur de polengi to me will you so he's going out to the window and shouting to all the servants and soldiers in the courtyard ki ye monsieur jo polengi hai monsieur de polengi hai usko mere office mein bhejo usko mere uh, cabin mein bhejo all right so what has happened in this scene is now robert is suddenly shocked ki this john wants to go to the prince and get soldiers to go to the city of orleans yani us main france ke city mein jana hai aur usko british ke matlab kya kehte hai uske haath se chhodana hai so john is again still very confident very calm and she is saying ki yes and i need only three men uh, there's monsieur de polengi that is poli there's jack and there's john god save and then there are a few other people named dick the archer and uh, their servants john honcourt and julian right now robert is still shocked so he calls the other person that is monsieur de polengi and he calls him into the office to confirm ki is that true that he wants to go with john this lady moving on and to john he says get out in the yard get out and wait in the yard so he tells john to go out so he can talk to this poli or this monsieur de polengi in private so john is now very happy now she is seeing ki he is trying to talk to the other people she is smiling brightly at him so she says right squire she goes out now robert to the steward go with her so now robert is telling his assistant to go with her abhi kyu lag raha hai aisa to go with her kyunki he doesn't trust her she might do anything she is so confident she is so strong and brave at any point she can do anything so he, robert is asking his assistant or the steward to go with her stay within call and keep an eye on her to stay within call is to be near enough to hear matlab itna bhi dur mat jana ki main tumhe bulao tum mujhe suno hi nahi all right so stay near enough to hear me and keep your eye on her keep an eye on something is to watch someone or to something or to watch something carefully i shall have her up here again i will call her up or her again is what robert is saying the steward retreats hastily bertrand de polengi a french guard enters salutes and stands waiting so this assistant now runs behind john and is going to be with her the person poli of pulengi monsieur de pulengi who is a french guard or who is a soldier enters robert's cabin and he stands waiting robert says she says you jack and dick have offered to go with her what for do you take her crazy idea of going to the dolphin seriously so pulengi says slowly there is something about her it may be worth trying worth yani of value ki try karke dekhte hai kya harm hai usme kuch value dikh raha so robert says oh come on poli you must be out of your mind so polengi says unmoved unmoved yani wo fir bhi confident hai what is wrong with it the dolphin is in shinon like a rat in a corner except he won't fight the english will take the orleans he will not be able to stop them So what is happening in the scene now? Robert is discussing with Polengi. Ki, are you sure you want to go with her? Why do you want to go? It's such a crazy idea. Hai. Why do you want to take her to the Prince of France? So Polengi is saying she seems very confident. Let's try it. 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 Let's डॉफिन यानी जो प्रिंस है फ्रांस का इज इन शिनॉन शिनॉन इज अ प्लेस इन फ्रांस लाइक अ रैट इन अ कॉर्नर एक्सेप्ट दैट ही वोट फाइट द इंग्लिश विल टेक दी ओरलींस ही विल नॉट बी एबल टू स्टॉप दम तो वॉट वॉट इज पोलेंगी से अगर हमने ये नहीं किया तो डॉफिन तो शिनॉन में छिपा हुआ है कोने में ही वोट फाइट सो द ब्रिटिश विल देन कैप्चर ओरलींस मतलब वो लोग कब्जा कर लेंगे उस जगह पे एंड ही विल नॉट बी एबल टू स्टॉप दम All right. So now the scene is getting serious. If you can notice, one reminder, students. Everyone, please make sure you are noticing the meanings of all the words given, in case you do not know it in your notebooks. All right. Moving on. Robert, he beat the English year before last at Montagues. I was with him, Polengi. But his men are cowed now, and he can't work miracles. and i tell you that nothing can save your side now but a miracle robert miracles are all right poli the only difficulty about them is that they don't happen nowadays so now what is happening now robert and polengi are still arguing about this ki 
is this idea a good idea or not to send Joan of Arc to the Prince of France? So Robert says, "Nay, Prince ne to British ko last last to last year beat kiya tha. There was this place called Montargis, wahan pe usne British ko haraya tha, and I was with him. So why do you think that the Prince cannot fight?" So Polengi says, "But his men are cowed. Prince might be confident. Prince might be ready to fight." But his men, यानी उसके जो soldiers हैं, they are very cowed. Cowed यानी frightened. See, it's written into your textbooks here. And I tell you, nothing can save us right now but a miracle. Miracle यानी an extraordinary event. कुछ इतना गजब का होना चाहिए या कुछ इतना अजीब हो सकता है मतलब जिसका कोई explanation ना हो तभी जाके हम लोग ये war जीत सकते हैं. And if you can remember the map that we had before, you can see that they are surrounded by the British all over and the Burgundians. So Polengi is right. कि अभी हमें कुछ नहीं बचा सकता. Only a miracle can save us. So Robert says miracles are all right, Poli. The only difficulty about them is that they don't happen nowadays. Robert अभी भी confident नहीं है. Robert the military officer is still saying that that miracles don't happen that easily. ये ऐसे ही नहीं होते. So Polengi says I used to think so. I'm not so sure, sure sure now. There is something about her. I think the girl herself is a bit of a miracle. Anyhow. This is our last chance. Let's see what she can do. Robert, wavering, wavering. Yani, he is still not confident, or he is still very unsure. To be unsure. So he says, "You really think that? Kya tum sahi mein sochte ho ki this will work?" Polengi turning. Is there anything left for us to think? Let us take a chance. Her words have put fire into me. Put fire into me. मतलब अभी उसके अंदर उसने आग मतलब actually आग नहीं जला दिया है. But this is a metaphor. Of sort, it's basically saying that they have inspired me. That Joan, who is the girl who wants to go to the Prince of France, his words have put me in touch with the inspiration and motivation that I will do this. So Robert said, giving up. Few, you are as mad as she is. Now Robert is convinced that everyone is crazy because for a girl to listen to one thing, they are all ready. But they are not seeing the situation. So Robert is also thinking that everyone is crazy. You are as mad as she is. All right, moving on. Polengi, obstinately. Obstinately, का मतलब है still very stubborn, still very confident. It's written right here. We want a few people now. See where the same ones have landed us. So he says we want a few mad people now. So what is Polengi saying stubbornly? कि normal people तो हमने use करके देख लिया. अभी ऐसा कुछ idea हमने use ही नहीं किया जो normal नहीं है. तो हमें एब नॉर्मल यानी वी नीड अ फ्यू मैड पीपल नाउ क्योंकि जो सेम वाले थे जो नॉर्मल वाले लोग थे उन्होंने हमारे लिए तो कुछ भला किया नहीं और दे हैव बीन एबल टू हर्ज अ लॉट रॉबर्ट सेज आई फील लाइक अ फूल स्टिल इफ यू फील श्योर नाउ रॉबर्ट इज थोड़ा इफ यू सी वॉट इज हैपनिंग यूर हिज चेंजिंग हिज ओपिनियन थोड़ा सा पहले वो बहुत स्टबन और कॉन्फिडेंट था कि नहीं मुझे भेजना ही नहीं है तुम्हें आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू सेंड यू टू द डॉफिन बट नाउ यू कैन सी दैट He is very unsure now. He is like, क्या तुम फिर भी sure हो? I are you sure? So Polengi says, I feel sure enough to take her to Shinon unless you stop me. So Polengi is saying, आप मुझे order दे दो बस I will go. But if you stop me, then it's a problem. So Robert says, Do you think I ought to have another talk with her? मतलब ought to यानी should should I have another talk with her? Or must I have another talk with her? So Polengi says. He goes to the window directly. वो पूछा भी नहीं है रॉबर्ट को. He just goes to the window and says, "Yes, Joan, come up." वो इतना excited है. He's so motivated to go to the Prince of France कि he directly goes to the window and calls Joan in the cabin. Joan enters. अभी Joan cabin enter करती है. तो Langi says gravely or seriously, "Be seated, Joan." So Joan is asked to sit. Robert asks him, "Ask uh, Joan now. कि what is your name?" Until now, Robert did not know the name of the girl. He just knew there's this girl who wants to go to France to the prince, so she can ask for soldiers and go to fight the British. So Robert asks her, "What is your name?" Joan says, "They have always called me Jenny in Lorraine. Here in France, I am Joan. The soldiers call me the maid." Now, if you notice the difference between the names, it's not Jenny, Joan. They both start with the J, so it's like a nickname of sort. Lorraine is a place in France, right? And the soldiers in France, in the place that they are currently, they are calling her the maid, yani a person who is helpful, a person who is strong and supportive. Robert says, "How old are you?" "Seventeen." So they tell me. 
I might be 19. I don't remember. Now this girl is so excited, and maybe for a fact she is also not very well educated. I'm not so sure. So she doesn't even remember her age as much. She might be 16. She might be 19. She doesn't remember anymore. But what she knows is she wants to go to the prince. उसे खुद का एज भी याद नहीं है लेकिन उसका मोटिवेशन इतना स्ट्रॉन्ग है कि उसे वो पता है कि उसको एग्जैक्टली क्या करना है नाउ रॉबर्ट सेज आई सपोज यू थिंक रेजिंग अ सीज इज एज इजी एज चेजिंग आउट ऑफ अ मेडो यू थिंक सोल्जरिंग इज एनी बडी जॉब रेजिंग अ सीज यानी सराउंडिंग सम वन फ्रॉम ऑल साइड एंड अटैकिंग द फोर्सेज सी द मीनिंग इज गिवन टू योर लेफ्ट so robert is telling her do you think raising a siege yani kisi ko charo aur se gherna aur us pe attack karna bahut easy hai you think kaisa and what have they compared it to now there's a simile here is as easy as chasing a cow out of a meadow kya tumhe lagta hai ki attack karna ek cow ko bhagana jaisa hai you think soldiering is anybody job soldiering is doing the duties of a soldier so he is asking her tumhe lagta hai tum aise hi kar logi So Joan says, "I don't think it can be very difficult if God is on your side." Now, one thing about Joan of Arc is she used to believe in God a lot, and especially the Christian God. So, even after her death, what the church did was they gave her the title of a saint. Hindi me sant jise bolte hain, yani a holy man or holy woman. They say Joan of Arc was given the title of a saint after she died. So Robert says, "Have you ever seen English soldiers fighting?" Have you ever seen them plundering, burning, turning the countryside into a desert? Have you heard no tales of their prince who is the devil himself or of the English king's father? So now Robert is asking her seriously. Kya tumne kabhi kuch suna nahi hai ki kaisa hota hai ye sab? How are the English soldiers yani British soldiers wo kaise fight karte hai? Have you seen them plundering? Plundering yani looting. Tumne kabhi unko dekha lootte, burning yani jalate, turning the countryside into a desert sab kuch matlab डिस्ट्रॉय करने करते हुए तुमने कभी देखा है हैव यू हर्ड नो टेल्स ऑफ दियर प्रिंस टेल्स यानी स्टोरीज ऑफ दियर प्रिंस मतलब ब्रिटिशर्स का जो प्रिंस है हैव यू हर्ड नो स्टोरीज अबाउट हिम वो हु इज द डेविल हिमसेल्फ नाउ ऑब्वियसली द प्रिंस इज नॉट अ डीमन और अ गोस्ट बट अगेन दे आर मेकिंग अ कंपैरिजन योर की द ब्रिटिश प्रिंस इज सच अ फोर्सफुल और अ फियर्स फाइटर की वो डेविल से कम नहीं है वो किसी शैतान से कम नहीं है So Joan says, "You do not understand, Squire. Our soldiers have always been beaten because they are fighting only to save their skins. To save their skins means to save their lives. And the shortest way to save your skin is to run away. But I will teach them how to fight for France. Then they will drive the soldiers before them like sheep. You and Polly will live to see the day when there will not be a single English soldier on the soil of France." Now, what does Jones say to Robert? जो उसको डराने की कोशिश कर रहा है कि क्या तुमने ये सब देखा है क्या तुमने ब्रिटिशर्स को लड़ते हुए देखा है इट्स सो डेंजर इट्स सो स्कैरी सो जोन सेज कि यू डू नॉट अंडरस्टैंड स्क्वायर स्क्वायर इज द मतलब द पर्सन एज इन द रॉबर्ट शी इज टॉकिंग टू एंड शी सेज इज द सोल्जर्स आर सोल्जर्स जो हमारे फ्रेंड्स फ्रांस के सोल्जर्स है दे आर ऑलवेज बीट एन वाई वो हमेशा हार क्यों जाते हैं बिकॉज दे आर ट्राइंग टू और दे आर फाइटिंग टू सेव दे आर लाइफ अगर तुम लड़ लड़ रहे हो लेकिन तुम किस लिए लड़ रहे हो खुद की जान बचाने के लिए सो शी सेज दैट द शॉर्टेस्ट वे टू सेव योर लाइफ और टू सेव योर स्किन इज टू रन अवे सो शी सेइंग राइट अगर तुम सिर्फ अपने जान बचाने के लिए लड़ रहे हो तो तुम एक्चुअली पूरी तरह से नहीं लड़ रहे हो यू आर नॉट फाइटिंग ब्रेवली यू आर फाइटिंग इन अ वेरी स्केर्ड और फ्राइट एंड मैन सो शी इज सेंग बट आई विल टीच दम ऑल टू फाइट फॉर फ्रांस शी इज सेंग शी सो कॉन्फिडेंट की वो सोल्जर्स के दिलों में या उनके मन में मतलब वो बहादुरी पैदा करेगी और शील create that bravery in their mind ki they will fight for france then they will drive the soldiers before them like sheep to wo britishers ko kaise harayenge ki wo britishers shaitan nahi matlab devil nahi hai but they are like sheep hum log unko aise harayenge you and poli will live to see the day when there will not be a single english soldier on the soil of france so she is so confident ki wo bol rahe ki robert yani the british officer the military officer of france and poli the monsieur de polengi will Live to see the day. Ki wo log jite hue dekhenge ki France free ho jaye. So Robert says to Polengi, "This may all be nonsense, Poli, but the troops may just be inspired by it. To, though nothing that we say seems to put any fire into them. Even the Dauphin might believe it. And if she can put some fight into him, 
she can put it into anybody so what is robert saying to polengino or polino ki ye sab nonsense lag raha hai mujhe i still feel ki this is not a very good idea but troops might just be inspired by it but jo soldiers hai hamare the way she is speaking so confidently they'll be inspired or motivated by it and even the dolphin might believe it so robert is saying ki isme itna confidence hai ki the prince of france or the dolphin himself will believe it and she can put the fight into him and if she can put the fight into him matlab wo usme agar ladne ki himmat paida kar sakti hai to wo kisi mein bhi ladne ki himmat ko paida kar sakti hai so robert says turning to john now you listen to me and don't cut in before i have time to think your orders are that you will go to shinon under the escort of this gentleman and his three friends so robert ne kya bola john ko ki abhi tum meri baat suno and don't cut in yani usko interrupt mujhe interrupt mat karna your orders that you will go to shinon shinon is where the prince stays the dolphin stays under the escort of this gentleman escort yani in the presence or in the company of someone kisi ke sath jana so john said radiant clas- clasping her hands oh thank you squire abhi john ko apna kaam mil gaya she wanted three people to go with her to the prince she got the order and the permission for it so radiant so she was bright and very cheerful so pulangi says how is she to get into the royal presence now there is one more problem wo shinon tak to hamare sath chalegi lekin wo castle yani jo prince ka jo jahan pe rehta hai prince ka jo ghar hai usme kaise jayegi how will she get the permission to enter the castle so robert says i don't know how did she get into my presence i will send her to shinon and then she can say that i sent her then let come what may i can do no more so robert usse bolta hai ki i don't know वो मेरे प्रेजेंस में आ गई मैं भी इतना इंपॉर्टेंट ऑफिसर हूं मैं भी इतना बड़ा इंसान हूं बट शी समहाउ मैनेज टू कम इन टू माय ऑफिस एंड रिक्वेस्ट फॉर दिस एंड शी इवन गॉट द परमिशन फ्रॉम मी तो मैं तो उसे भेजूंगा शिनॉन में यानी वेयर द प्रिंस स्टेज एंड आई विल टेल कि आई हैव सेंट हर पर उसके आगे मैं कुछ नहीं करने वाला ओके सो जोन सेज एंड द ड्रेस आई मे हैव अ सोल्जर्स ड्रेस स्क्वायर तो जोन आस हर की Ask Robert, not her, him. That can I have a soldier's dress? Soldier's dress, yeah, ni not an actual dress, but like a armor. Jo ladte samay jaise coats pente metal ke bane hue, maybe with a horse as well. Okay. So Robert says, take what you please. I wash my hands of it. Wash my hands, yeah, ni I will not take any responsibility for it. So Robert, kya kar raha hai? The Robert, the military officer, he is giving her the permission ki yes, you can go to the prince. और वो कैसे कर रहा है कि मुझे इससे कोई लेना देना नहीं है चलो तुम इतने कॉन्फिडेंट हो तुम्हें यकीन है कि तुम मतलब फ्रांस को छुड़ा सकती हो देन यू गो टू द प्रिंस एंड आई विल नॉट टेक रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी फॉर इट वाइडली एक्साइटेड बाय हर सक्सेस कम पोली शी डैश इज आउट सो ना जोन इज सो एक्साइटेड दैट शी रन आउट टू गेट द सोल्जर्स ड्रेस एंड शी टेल्स पोली यानी मुस्ती पोलेंगी टू कम विथ हॉर सो रॉबर्ट सेज शेकिंग पोलेंगी इज हैंड गुड बाय ओल्ड मैन I'm taking a big chance. Few other men would have done it, but as you say, there is something about her. Polengi says, "Yes, there is something about her." Goodbye. And that brings us to the end of this part of the play. Obviously, the play is much longer. It will obviously talk about the war, but our English textbook only shows a part of this play. So, in summary, what has happened in this play is a girl named Joan is going to a military officer's office. and asking him permission to go to the prince of france to ask him for soldier at first the military officer yani robert jo hai he is not very convinced he is very not very confident about her but when she speaks and she talks and even after all his caring and all his talking she is not ready to give up he finally agrees and he gives her the permission to go to the prince of france so from the story itself you can find out ki how joan was brave and how she was not afraid of anyone right and that brings us to the end of our narration uh, students i hope you enjoyed the narration i hope you got on some new words got to learn new ways of how to read how to narrate a play um the quiz will be given on the whatsapp group i want you all to quickly answer the quiz and send me the pictures of the meanings that you have written in your notebook along with your objective on my private chat all right Thank you for attending this class. Hope you have a nice day everyone.